Hey everyone, John here and welcome back to another tutorial. For this one, I'm going to be giving you guys an in-depth overview of your actual settings for your capture card. Now this is not the settings for streaming, but it's more so the settings of getting that overall good picture before you guys start either recording or before you start streaming. So what you're going to need is your updated version of the Elgato game capturing software, which you can get on their website. And then you're going to need to make sure you're actually capturing something off of your console or off of your PC. Whichever one you're using, whichever capture card you're using from Elgato, you just need to make sure you have something up on the screen because we are going to be making adjustments in the settings and you want to be able to see those in real time. So once you guys have that up, what you're going to want to do is go over and to the right hand side, make sure it's showing capture in blue. And I have all these things already opened, but if you don't need these open, that's fine. You can just keep collapsing them by you know, just doing this, clicking on the little arrows and it collapses everything. But if you do need something open, then you just click on the right arrow and it drops it down. But what we're going to really want to focus on is device. So right now I'm using the Game Capture HD 60 and it shows in this little gray box here, this little info box that I'm doing at 1080p 60 FPS. To get more information about it though, you just kind of click on that and it's going to show you what your input is, it's going to show you the output, it's also going to show you, I believe that's the file size, and then you also have your audio. So to really get into all these settings to make adjustments and everything, you're going to see this little gear on the right hand side, it's going to say show device settings. So we'll click on that, and right in here is where you're going to be adjusting everything from the capture to the picture to the audio profiles even advanced so let's go ahead and take a pretty in-depth look on each of these so for the in-depth device you have a drop down of different consoles so for me I only stay on Xbox one for mine and I can use this with my switch I can use it with my 360 my PS4 my Wii U you know it, it doesn't really matter which one you're using it on I've never seen a difference. Some people say there is a difference, but I never see a difference on it. Performance and quality and everything all looks the same, at least to me. So you guys can adjust that if you would like to, but I keep it on one of them and it works for everything I plug it into. HDMI, of course, for the video input, but it's grayed out, so of course you can't change it because that's the only thing that's there. And then you have your audio inputs. I leave it at the HDMI audio because I don't use analog audio, but if you do, then you would, you, you would choose the analog audio. Now for the HDMI color range, this really doesn't have much of an effect. I mean, yes, you can do expanded. It might add some extra colors here and there, but for me personally, I don't see much of a difference, but I like to at least have the best quality possible, so I do expanded. Now for your profile, if you are playing on a 720p only type TV, and you don't have 1080p capability on that TV, then you need to keep it at 720p or 720 HD. If you're using a 1080p, you could do either one and you'll be fine. There's really not much of a difference in terms of how those look either. It's just whichever one you want to try to do. Now, if you are streaming, I would highly recommend that you only do a 720p for your streams just because a lot of people cannot watch a 1080p and a lot of platforms can't support the 1080p 60 FPS so that also when you stream will require a high amount of upload speed for that and that that makes it hard for people to watch it if you are trying to do a 1080p 60 FPS speaking of the frames per second you want to make sure you allow and it even says here it says when this box is checked HD output will be hey I was reading that will be at 50 or so frames per second if the hardware is capable and the input is 50 to or 50 or 60 frames per second, normally all output is 25 or 30 FPS. So I keep mine at 60 just because. And the quality here, this is where this gets gets kind of tricky. Now, yes, I do have mine set to the best, and it does look really good. However, even if I brought it down to here, and this is going to adjust your background. This is what I was saying, you want stuff on the fly. I mean, you're not really going to see much of a difference because you're not doing too much of a change. But if you notice up here, this changed to 38.6. My file size got smaller as I bring this down. Now, the more you bring this down, though, the less crisp it gets. So even if you left it right here in the middle, so if I dropped it down to about right there, give or take, 
So once it gets everything back up, I mean, it still looks good on here, and it's right in the middle pretty much. Maybe a little bit further towards better, but middle would probably have been like right there. But as you can see, now it dropped down from 38 to 31. And it's basically just letting you know that the file size is getting smaller, and that's good. Especially if you guys have like not a lot of space when you're making videos and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's really good. I mean, you can adjust this as much as you need to. I do not mess with the convert standard definition or stretch standard definition, so you can leave those unchecked. Now, if you guys have any more questions about this, let me know in the comments. We're going to move on to Picture tab. So in the Picture tab, this is where you want to start making your adjustments. Now, if you guys want to take a screenshot or pause the video, this is what I use for my settings. And just so you guys can kind of take a look, it doesn't look too bad. It might be a little bit darker in certain areas, but it's not too bad. And of course, you can mess with it, though. So let's, okay, so I have that at 7. Okay, so I'm going to just remember that. So if I wanted to mess with brightness, as you guys can see, I'm messing with it on the fly. I can make it super, super dark. You know, it's it's something that you will pretty much be able to adjust as you go. And that's what I was saying. Like, if you just mess with these, you'll be able to figure out which setting is going to work best for you. Now, for audio, I don't touch audio profiles. I don't have any profiles in advanced. I do not mess with this either. Now, it does say for TV compatibility to only adjust this value if your TV fades to black while connected to the Elgato game capturing hardware or game capture HD. But I don't mess with that. I don't have any problems with that. Everything's good. And if you ever need to reset defaults, you can by clicking that. But I don't want to do that because mine's pretty good. I like how mine is. And then once you're good, you just pretty much hit OK. But for me, I'm going to hit cancel. And then it's going to go and adjust everything right back to the way it was. Yep. Yep. There it goes. Okay. So now another thing with the, with the game, once you get everything set up properly in terms of how you want it to look, you do want to go down to game audio. And this is where you're going to want to actually jump into a game and see how loud everything is. Now I have mine at 51%. And this is actually a really good setting for also when I stream. So... I want to make sure you guys are hearing game volume okay as well as my voice whenever I'm streaming. But that is definitely a good thing to mess with is the game audio. Now if the game audio is too low whenever you guys are recording something, you can always adjust that in your actual editing software by adding a volume effect to it. Or you can bring this guy up a little bit higher but don't let it spike. If it goes, if it goes really really high into these yellow areas over here then it's really, really too loud. If it hits red completely every time, it's super, super loud. It's going to be super distorted. You want to kind of have a middle balance in between like the dark green just peeking into the yellow, and then that should be fine. But that is pretty much it in terms of those settings for those two. Um, I did mention that up here, you do have it where you can go and save where you want your videos to go to, where you want to export your files to and your screenshots, and to make sure that you have the enable flashback recording and enable stream command. And the way I got to this was at the very top right hand corner, you'll see the info button, which is this, this I here, and then right next to that is the gear, and that brings you right into your actual preferences for your uh, Elgato Capture HD. So you have for this, you want to make sure these settings are are done as well. And I mentioned that in the introduction video, but this is very important, especially when you're making videos and streams. So make sure you guys have these set up too. Now let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, okay, so if you are going to be exporting any of these files or sharing them or anything like that, you want to make sure you have these settings also especially if you're exporting separate files. That's very important for anyone who's going to be doing their own separate type of videos instead of streams, or even probably with streams too, because where you can have your webcam on one channel, or you'll have your live commentary on another, and then the actual sound from the capture card on another. So that's really important. And then you'll have updates, hotkeys. Hotkeys are important. I just don't use them. They're just basically for where you can start and stop recording, start and stop a live commentary. You can take a screenshot with a button 
or you can set the flashback recordings. Now, what I mean by hotkeys is something on your keyboard. Like, let's say I wanted to do, say I wanted this to be five. So it's already in use, can't use it. So what if I want to do F9? So every time I do F9, it's going to record. But I don't want that, so. <laughs> oh, did backspace. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, if I go back in there, because advanced, it just gets to the point to where this talks about your video encoding, and that's for streaming and stuff. But I know this video was a little bit longer. It's just like I, I like to go in depth on these things because I really want you guys to understand, you know, once you have all this stuff to your knowledge, you'll be able to feel more comfortable with it. I don't like to rush you guys through these videos because then you might still have remaining questions. And that's fine if you do. Let me know what those are in the comments. But I don't want you guys to feel confused when you're using this platform or the software. So... If you guys ever have any questions when I'm doing any of these tutorials, let me know and I'll be happy to work with you. I'll be happy to walk you through it. That is also what these tutorials are for. So once we start getting into the streaming tutorials and stuff, it might get a little confusing. The videos are going to be a little bit longer just because there's a lot that goes into it. And I want you guys, like I said, to feel comfortable while you're doing this. So don't get scared when you see these long videos, okay? And I do appreciate you guys spending the time to watch them. I love doing this and helping you guys out. It, it's a lot of fun being able to create videos and to also live stream. I know a lot of people have that, that interest in it, and it's such a great time to be trying to get into that. But anyway, guys, I will catch you in the next video. Be sure to go ahead, check out the channel and the playlist for other tutorials and other videos and everything like that, and I'll definitely be answering any questions you guys have in the comments but if you guys need to reach out to me outside of youtube you can you can hit me up on discord you can hit me up on twitter all the information is going to be in the video description you guys can even send me an email if you guys feel more comfortable that way I have it a little bit more private but i will catch you guys like i said in the next video you guys have a good remaining rest of your day and i'll see you next time take care